Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Since Google I.O. just happened last week, so I thought let's make a Google portfolio video. These portfolio projects I'm going to show you are made by Google designers for Google projects. So you'll get a glimpse of how Google does their own design projects, how they lay it out in the form of case studies. Also, I'll be showcasing a 45 minute long portfolio creation course that is made by Google and explains how to do everything in detail. So let's just get started with today's video. The first one we have right here is by Sanath Rath, who was a designer in the Google Docs team. And the best part about this portfolio project I like is the problem statement is right there in front. It is so clear that in the first three lines, you get to know the issue that is there with Google Docs. They showcase how outdated the product is, how many features this product actually lacks, as well as what kind of technical limitations were also existing. So uh, even if a person just browses through the first three lines, he knows what the project is all about. Now the aim here is very clear. This person was asked to beautify the overall experience by allowing users to choose from a brand new set of pre-designed templates. And of course, there's a relevant link here. It's always good to give reference links or citation links in your portfolio. So plus one for that. Of course, the designer here quickly defines their role is of a UI designer and visual designer on this project. So they're not really inflating their role. They're not saying, oh, I was the king of this project. They are saying exactly what needs to be said. They've also showed how they've worked with other visual designers as well. So this is a culmination of that entire larger project. Now, this is something that I will give kudos to companies like Google, where the vision of a product is so clear that you can just not miss it. And that is what they've shown here as well. The vision for this project, as well as the product was so clear that they've shown it here. I've seen in a lot of companies where the project deadline remains the same, but the features and the vision keeps on changing. So kudos to Google for this. And also one more thing to see here is the bullet points have made things so clear. So instead of showcasing paragraphs in your own case studies, maybe go for quick, short, bullet points, just like what they've done here. I also love how they've showcased a glimpse of the final product of sorts or what they are trying to showcase here. Till now, this portfolio seems like a movie where things are opening up. You know, there's, there's a description, there is a backstory, and then the movie starts. So here, there's a backstory, there's a problem statement, and then the movie is visually shown to you. Another takeaway I had from this particular portfolio was the language being written here. So if you pause right here and read through all three of these points, you can quickly see how story-like these points are. The designer is trying to explain to someone who's looking at this portfolio. And, and the explanation is all about a conversation that this person is having with you. So instead of saying, I worked on this project for this, this, this thing, and I made these changes, you can say, I found out after working a while in Google that there were certain problems internally with using Google Docs as well. So I went ahead and asked the people working there. Quickly, you've changed from a robotic chat GPT like tone to a very nice human personalized tone where people now understand everything that you're doing and it's all it almost feels as if you're in that moment with that person it's like a good book and as you can see the final result is often mentioned again and again with different screens and illustrations that the designer kind of has created here another thing that is unique is the impact so instead of just showing you oh these are the changes i made and this was the test results you can show the impact it had with credibility, you can always take maybe a user's testimonial after you've done the changes and the user starts using it. You can use a happy user's testimonial to see that happy end of things and how it worked out. A good way they've shown the results of the new changes are through tweets. Wow, this is incredible. Doing user interviews, maybe recording them or taking testimonials, which takes a lot of time. Just take reviews. If you've updated your app, there's bound to be people reviewing it. They're bound to be blogs reviewing it as in Business Insider and TechCrunch here. 
and of course people reviewing it on Twitter and other social media. Well, this is one way you can justify your Twitter blue purchase. They've also at the end showcased that even a month after the release, there were increase in active usage, etc. due to this feature. So not only have they done the entire project, but they've also kept track of the project. They've also seen what happened two months, three months, six months, one year after that project. is. Now, Sanath also has a lot of other case studies showcased with Google as well. For example, office compatibility mode in Google Docs and other tools. And of course, their own personal projects that they've done before working at Google. Of course, Sanath has shifted since then to WhatsApp at Facebook. So kudos to you, Sanath. Hopefully we get to see WhatsApp related case studies in the future as well. The next one we're taking a look at is by Pandar Yusufi and it's called Fish in Your Ear, which is the Google Translate redesign project. So again, Pindar was a Google designer and worked on this wonderful project with Team Google. Now again, just beginning is so delightful. The language used here is amazing. Humans have been fascinated with magical devices that break language barriers. Who speaks like that, man? I mean, a talented designer for sure. It, it almost seems as if you're sitting in Google I.O. itself. A revolutionary language being used here up front hypes the person up who's reading it, makes them feel good about the article or in this case, the case study all of a sudden. Unfortunately, I would have loved to see a few more relative screens up top as well, just to kind of see where the project has gone. I'm glad that this person has created context for the what the app already is. So they're not just focusing on future problems or the current problem, they're focusing on why this app is good and how it works for people which is a really good context for the reader or for the viewer. The problem, again, the problem is upfront, something that you guys should focus on. And the best part about this problem statement is it just starts with the user. So this is clearly a user-centered design. Unfortunately, many of our users did not know these features existed. So this person is talking about a set of features I just wish they had given a little more context with the, with the actual terminology and what they're talking about. Now the hypothesis made here is the icons are too small. So maybe people are not using it because they feel these icons are irrelevant or can't be clicked. That's a hypothesis that the designer has come. They've also shown how they're testing at each level and what, where they are going wrong. One thing I would like to point out, which I'm not currently liking in this case study, is that there are few to no bullet points and few to no visual breaks. So I'm having to read this long paragraph and I'm losing interest somewhere. Then of course, I really like this one section, if we scroll down, where they're defining what is what, where the problem is by actually pointing out on the UI. I always appreciate this where UI designers or even UX designers showcase where certain changes have been made in the UI by giving pointers and you know just showcasing it visually, which I think explains much better. Now quickly, they have also jumped onto before and after. So you can now see the before of the project, before of what the project was, and now after the project is ended, the results look very different. Better, bolder icons with actual color to make them feel actionable. And they've also given a little text below this, below these icons to show context. So if a person doesn't know what this icon means, they'll know just by reading. And of course, I think Google loves to post Twitter stuff. Now, one thing we're seeing here is that none of these Google projects look beautiful or have crazy effects or graphics and designs, nothing. It's very simple, it's bare bone, just focuses on the project. Pindar is still with Google, he is the UX director at Google Translate. Now, Google has actually under its Google certificates has created a short, well short, 45 minutes long course building a design portfolio website. So if you guys are looking to see how Google does it, what they are focusing on as well when they're hiring, as well as what these multinational companies look at from the perspective of a hiring, uh, person as well. The topics that they're covering, the topics that they're covering here is best practices, personal branding, which is really good, 
building an online presence, sharing your work online basically. Social media profile, how you should show yourself on social media as well as a designer. UX design communities, necessary places you should be at and how to get reviews for your portfolios as well. So a bunch of good stuff. I think this is the best 45 minutes you'll spend on learning how to create a UX portfolio. Another fantastic resource to learn about case studies and portfolios is called Case Study Club. I just came across this and it's a free resource which delivers one amazing case study in your email every single week. Apart from that, they have a list of case studies that they have on their website. Everything from Spotify to Disney to Lego, every big company you've ever heard of, they have some or the other UX case study from designers from that company. Now they also have interviews. So they, they do this, you know, podcast kind of interview with them. And for free, you can actually check out what the entire interview was all about all the questions and answers asked by these designers. They even have something called journal, which is essentially a blog. But apart from that, they have something called pro. Now their pro account is very simple. You join their waitlist. Uh, it's almost like a cohort where you join and you learn from the top people. You also get to network with these top people. And it's basically a community, a large community of designers from top companies who have joined together in every different role. And they also help you out. So it's kind of like a course along with the community. It's a fun little thing that you can join. Now I believe a UX designer can learn from other UX designers as well. And here there's something called Google User Experience Research. This is a platform where actual UX researchers from Google will do UX research with you. So you will be participants and users in these research. If you're someone who wants to learn and see how UX researchers are doing the real UX research in Google, why not become an actual participant and see how it is done? I think that is a fantastic idea. Just so if you want to learn from Google designers, how to do design or how to do research, this is a great platform. It's called Google user experience research. Links will be down in the description. The sign up form is pretty simple. It will ask you a few questions personal questions as well as just general knowledge kind of questions about uh, you know where you studied from or where you live where have you traveled to what kind of food do you eat things like that just general questions to understand who you are a great part about this is that after you have participated you can receive often receive gift cards and actual money cards so they're paying you for your time and you're learning from them. <laughs> How fantastic is that? All right, guys, that was it for today's video. Short, sweet and crisp. Before you head out, make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed watching this video. And I will see you every week. So make sure you've subscribed to the channel and, have, and you've also clicked on the bell icon and switched on all notifications. That, will me that means you'll never miss out any valuable video that I put out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Same place, same time. Until next time, take care. God bless.